This Use Update is brought to you by They ask us how we do it. How we outrun the world. They ask us how does it feel to fly? How do we dive head first into the deep? And emerge victorious. They ask us if we're afraid, if we're nervous, or if we ever feel lonely so far away from home. But the truth is, home is always right here with us. Get ready to witness the magic of the Olympic Games like never before. Welcome to the Barbados Today Evening Update. It's Thursday, August 4th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernanda Wedderburn. Topping our news this hour, investigations are on the way into what is being described as a major drug bust at the Bridgetown port. Bobby the study understands that the drug is a combination of what appeared to be cocaine and cannabis in a shipment of paint. The illegal substance, which is said to have a million dollar street value, was discovered this afternoon after the cargo was offloaded. No arrests have been made so far. 30-year-old Akil William Grant has been remanded to prison until next month. Grant is charged with several offenses, including the murder of Michael Mapp of Blaze Hill, St. Philip. Mapp, age 42, was discovered in a shallow grave in a cane field at a Bayfield on May 24. An autopsy revealed that he died from gunshot wounds. Grant, of the same address, is accused of killing Mapp between May 18 and 24. He also faces a charge of entering the country illegally by sea between January 1 and 31st this year. He is also charged with possession, possession of intent to supply trafficking and cultivation of cannabis. In other news, Barbados records an increase in tourist arrivals for the first half of the year. Presenting the report this morning at the Savannah Hotel, CEO of the Barbados Tourism and Marketing Inc., William Griffith, says figures show that the island's bread and butter industry posted an over 5% increase during January to June. Preliminary statistics for the first six months of 2016 have revealed that stayover arrivals grew by 5.6% or 17,094 additional arrivals. That brings the total to 320,953, and that is up from 303,859 arrivals recorded in the same period, January to June 2015. All months in the first six months, with the exception of April, recorded increases in arrivals, with January, at 62,485 arrivals total, and February at 61,015 arrivals, emerging as the two peak months in the six month period. And those two months had a growth of 11.3% and 5.5% respectively. There was also significant growth during the month of May, as visitor arrivals grew by 9.6% to reach 44,935. The UK, he says, remains the country's number one market, and he also revealed that so far there have been no indications of any fallout from Brexit. Over the past month, we have been gathering information from all of our major suppliers in the UK. It is still early days yet, and indications are that there has not been any short-term impact thus far. Notwithstanding, a team led by our Minister of Tourism and International Transport, the Honourable Richard Seeley, along with our Chairman, Alvin Jamant, and our BHTA Chairman, will be meeting very shortly with the leadership of British Airways, Virgin Airways, and the top 10 operators in London to examine the issue. And these meetings commence middle of next week. We will also be seeking to discuss new strategies towards preserving our market share so that we are strengthening our position to fiercely defend 
airlift in this legacy market. Meantime, Barbados could rake in approximately one billion U.S. dollars in investment, an additional 2,300 hotel rooms, and thousands of new jobs by 2019. That's according to Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., Stuart Lane, who says plans are already in the works for at least one or two new hotels to be built every year between 2015 and 2019. And our, our objective basically is to add at least one or two new products to the inventory. In other words, two hotels, one or two hotels every single year, commencing in 2015, all the way to, to, to 2019 and beyond. And to increase the double of our receipts, so $2 billion, and to employ an additional 7,500 persons directly, in about 16,000 persons indirectly. Um, so you're looking at probably 24,000 persons um, that you're looking to have in, in the sector or related in ancillary development um, for over the next 10 years. In sports, Spineland's Future A slammed Buccaneeros 73-17 when the Barbados Amateur Basketball Association's 2016 Summer Jam Under-19 competition continued last night at the YMCA in St. Michael. It was a one-sided affair for Pinelands, who dominated the proceedings 20-0, 36-9, and 56-12 in the first three quarters against the hapless Buccaneeros side. Two of Barbados's under-16 players, D. Ronnie Hurley and Rashid Maynard, who recently returned home from Guyana at the just-concluded Caribbean Basketball Championship, led from the front for Pinelands. Hurley top-scored with 18 points, while Maynard accounted for 10. Also making a contribution of will forwards Carlos Greenwich and with 14 and Joshua Lloyd with 12. The latter was the only player to nail two three-point shoots. Brandon Rucks and nine points was the best effort for the Buccaneeros. There's regional and international news after this short break. God, these papers ain't selling at all at all. Get your paper, get your paper. Only 225, get your paper. Get your paper, miss. Look, take it, take it. I can pay for it. Barbados today, all the way. <laughs> Barbados today, news you can trust. And we pick up with news from the region. Trinidad's former National Security Minister Gary Griffith tells residents not to be alarmed by claims about ISIS terrorists entering the country. More in this report from Fane Richards of TV6 News. ISIS is bent on bloodshed and slaughter, particularly of non-Muslims. But instilling fear is always a core target of the terrorist mission. Mr. Griffith says public figures in TNT have been making statements which fan the flames of fear when there is no evidence of any imminent ISIS threat here. There has been no confirmed terrorist that has returned from Syria into Trinidad and Tobago. And I think what, what I'm doing here is to, to again take away that undue fear, that element of fear. I'm not saying that we should not be concerned, but to state that 400 Trinidadians have returned to Trinidad and Tobago um, from Syria, that is not true. He acknowledges that Trinidad and Tobago is one of 80 countries from which ISIS has lured foreign fighters. When he left office in 2014, he says there were 32 confirmed Trini recruits to ISIS. He commends the PNM government for restructuring the SSA to make its work more effective, but he says there is still an important anti-terrorism component missing from their plan. You must have an elite counter-terrorist unit to deal with um, hostage negotiation, improvise explosive devices. Um, you also need to have a counter-terrorist intelligence unit separate and, and well under the SSA, but to deal specifically with monitoring these persons of interest. As for the return of the nine Trini nationals reportedly detained in Turkey, Mr. Griffith says TNT will have to be notified by either the UK or the US of their impending return. Those two countries are the only possible transit points into Trinidad since there are no direct flights from Turkey. On the international scene, reports are that two babies have been born in California with the severe birth defect microcephaly after their mothers contracted the Zika virus. 
The California Department of Public Health did not reveal where the mothers were from, but said they were infected this year in a country where it is endemic. The state has reported 114 cases of travel-associated Zika infections in 22 counties as of July 29. And on that note, we come to the end of our news and sports updates. But for the very latest, visit our website, www.pobbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe our e paper, email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals and Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.